we have discussed all the changes that take place in anapase except one which we have not mentioned which we will talk of when we come to cytokinesis. So the next stage is telophase and actually in telophase everything that happens is just reverse or opposite of prophase. So this is telophase and everything which is which happened in prophase, its reverse takes place here. So let us recall what happened in prophase. In prophase, including early prophase and late prophase, nuclear membrane, it dissociates and completely disappears. So here, the nuclear membrane is going to reassemble and reappear. But this nuclear membrane is going to reassemble or reappear around the chromosomes. So, what happened in anaphase was the chromosomes they have already moved towards the opposite poles and the chromosomes are here we started with four chromatin fibers so four threads would be seen here in case of prophase the chromatin fibers condense to start appearing like chromosome here they would decondense would become straight stretch to form the threads. So here we would start seeing one, two, three, four threads towards one pole and four threads towards the other pole. It is again reverse and around these the nuclear membrane starts to reassemble and reappear. So there would be one nuclear membrane around these four chromatin fibers and four would be here at the other pole surrounded by the nuclear membrane. So what is the change that is taking place here? The nuclear membrane reassembles and reappears. Reappears. So here we have seen the nuclear membrane reappear. Chromatin fibers are formed. So chromosomes, they thin out to form chromatin fibers. So chromosomes decondense to form chromatin fibers. Again, it is the reverse of what happened in prophase. One more change which took place in prophase was formation of aster rays and spindle fibers. So here aster rays are also gone, spindle fibers are also gone. Again reverse of what has happened in prophase. So aster rays and spindle fibers. Again dissociate and disappear. They dissociate and disappear. So, as we said in the beginning, the telophase is actually a reversal of prophase. In prophase, nuclear membrane disappears. Here, the nuclear membrane reappears by reassembling. And again, we are talking of only nuclear membrane, but other membranous structures, that is membrane of endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, everything would reassemble and reappear. And in the beginning, we said in the cell division diagrams, we are... Uh, emphasizing only on those parts which we want to specify here. So nucleus. Actually nuclear membrane, endoplasmic reticular membrane, Golgi membrane, all membranes would behave in the same manner. Plus other structures like nucleolus would also dissociate. So those things we have not shown here. We normally do not show but this thing we have to keep in mind. So nuclear membrane has reappeared and when we are saying nuclear membrane, other membranes have also reappeared. In prophase, chromatin fibers condense to form chromosomes. Here, chromosomes decondense into fibers. In prophase, aster rays arise, spindle fibers are formed. Here, they again dissociate and disappear. One change which we start showing here. Actually, the change starts in late anaphase or early telophase and that is cytokinesis. So what we do here is we normally show a small invagination 
around the equator. This indicates that cytokinesis has begun. Actually, cytokinesis starts by the end of anaphase or in the beginning of telophase. So we can show it either in anaphase, which we normally do not show because at that time our main emphasis is on that spindle apparatus and how the chromosomes are moving. And that is why we normally start showing it from telophase. But this constriction appears by the end of anaphase or beginning of telophase. Between these stages, there is no clear-cut demarcation that this stage ends here and this stage starts here. There is a little bit of overlapping. So this is telophase. Now this stage completes nuclear division. One nucleus of the parent cell has divided into two daughter nuclei. We said prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase are the sub stages of karyokinesis. So nucleus that is carrion has divided into two. Now the next change is going to be cytokinesis. What happens in cytokinesis and as we are talking of animal cell, cytokinesis takes place by invagination of plasma membrane. This furrow which is formed, it becomes deeper and deeper and finally it is going to join in the middle. So we will draw a couple or maybe two stages just to see what happens here. This furrow or depression has become deeper from both the sides or from all the sides. The centrioles, basically these are centrosomes because they have those fibers around them. And the two nuclei with their nuclear membrane and chromatin fibers and chromatin fibers are Four, one, two, three, four in each of the nucleus. This furrow gets deeper and finally this would join in the middle resulting in the formation of two daughter cells. This furrow gets deeper and ultimately it joins here. And again these two cells would have their centrosomes. Each one has its nucleus and in each nucleus are present four chromatin fibers. So now cytoplasm has also divided. Cytokinesis begins by the end of anaphase or telophase as we said. So this is basically cytokinesis. We have shown it in two stages and these two cells which are formed, they are daughter cells, the two daughter cells. And these two daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes as that of the parent cell. And that is why we called this division as equational division because the number of chromosomes in the parent cell, four, and in both the daughter cells is again 4 and that is why this equational division. This process completes mitotic division. So one cell has divided first nucleus divides then cytoplasm divides. Nuclear division completed in four phases prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and then cytoplasmic division takes place that is cytokinesis. And this results in formation of two daughter cells. Now, after understanding this, we need to know which cells undergo this. Like we already said, somatic cells have uh, undergo a mitotic division. And even germ cells, when they are in the first phase, that is multiplication phase, they are undergoing this kind of division. The next important thing is significance of mitosis. So what exactly is the significance of this particular division? So let us talk of significance of mitosis. It is the main type of division which is responsible for growth. Because if we take our example, 
the zygote which is formed after the fusion of gametes this zygote divides only by mitotic division so first important role or significance is it helps in growth it helps in growth plus if there is any kind of damage to any tissue say for example skin gets cut the new skin cells are formed and they are formed by division so for repair and regeneration so it helps in repair and regeneration another significance of mitosis all the cells which are formed by this division are identical identical in the sense of chromosome number so all the cells and we know every uh, species has a fixed number of chromosomes per cell like in our case all cells of our body have 46 chromosomes that is 23 pairs so how is this number maintained suppose skin uh, cells are dividing so new skin cells they should also have the same number of chromosomes so it helps in maintaining the diploid to it or whatever number so maintaining the chromosome number why we are not writing only diploid because if it takes place in haploid cell then that half or one set of chromosome number that will be maintained one more significance of mitosis in lower organisms it is the mode of reproduction when we talk of asexual reproduction or vegetative reproduction if a plant grows from say a stem cutting then the division which takes place is again mitotic division so it helps in asexual or asexual reproduction or vegetative vegetative reproduction so significance growth repair regeneration to maintain that same number of chromosome because if parent cell has one number say 10 then the daughter cells would also have 10 and it is a method of vegetative propagation or asexual reproduction in lower organisms lower organisms some of them when they do not show sexual reproduction the only means is asexual reproduction so these are certain important points or significance of mitotic division after discussing this we will be talking about the comparison now as we said in the beginning we started with an animal cell now we need to understand how mitotic division in animal cell and plant cell they differ from each other so in the next segment we'll compare the division same type of division taking place in animal cell and plant cell.